All right, I think we're going live. Welcome everyone to today's topic that I am so excited about. I literally woke up giddy to talk about something that I'm literally kind of obsessed with, power. And so our topic today is on power leaks and how embracing your dark feminine helps you to stop leaking your power. Because guess what happens? When you're leaking your power, then you don't have access to it to use to put into your magnificent purpose and to create amazing things into the world. So I'm very passionate about this. I've been studying power, I'd say for 20 years. I started out as a healer, learning about energy work, and then have really been gathering up lots of bits and pieces through the women's empowerment world and the sensuality world and the healing arts world to really weave it together to look at this very basic conversation around power. Because here's the thing, everything in the universe boils down to a power conversation literally, because power equals energy on some level, right? So energy is either flowing or it isn't. And when energy is flowing, there's health, there's power, there's electricity, there's generative force. When energy is not flowing, that's when disease sets in, we don't have access to power, there's a lot that happens and we um, aren't allowing our energy and our power to flow. So I feel very passionate about this and I'm really excited to share all these pieces with you all today. So thank you for all of you who are here. Thank you to all of you who may be watching the replay. This is such an important conversation because here's the thing, like I have been birthing this body of work that I call the feminine operating system. You know, that basically we've all had this patriarchal operating system automatically installed into our hard drive. We didn't really have a say in it at all, right? And, and nobody did. And meanwhile, the patriarchy, uh, patriarchal operating system doesn't serve the men either, but at least it's based on masculine values. Not the exalted ones, albeit, but at least it's based on masculine values, whereas for us, it's a completely wrong operating system. And so there's something that needs to happen for us to unplug from the patriarchal operating system and rewire ourselves to the feminine operating system. And in that process, I really believe that we need to learn how to reclaim our raw feminine power and then learn how to use it in our feminine operating system. So I'm very, very passionate about raw feminine power and what an interesting time in the world because I'm gonna to touch lightly upon the Super Bowl halftime show. I watched it when I was at the airport coming to Hawaii. Let's take a hot second moment to just really honor Look at these surroundings. I'm on the big island in Hawaii on the Kona side. Uh, this is my fifth time visiting here. This is an amazing farm owned by my dear sister goddess, Alex Alexander. There's acres of farms, there's macadamia nuts, there's chickens, there's ducks, you're gonna hear roosters. Um, there's dogs, there's, I mean, just anything you can think of. There's papayas and avocados and it's so lush here. So I really feel grateful that I get to be here um, as I'm tending to this work on the feminine operating system. So uh, I rent a room when I'm here and when I'm not here, it's available. So feel free, I'll try and put, I'll tag Alex later so that you can get her info if you ever wanna come to the Big Island. Okay, so back to the halftime show. So I watched it Monday morning while I was at the airport about to fly to Hawaii and within 60 seconds, tears streaming down my face, sniffling, like totally, <laughs> like sobbing in the airport lounge going, this is one of the most amazing things I have ever seen. It just touched me so deeply, literally within 60 seconds, because it was a gorgeous display of raw feminine power. And we don't get to see that out in the world, like ever. I mean, it's kind of shocking. Like it's, that's why it's so unusual for people to see because it's something we're not accustomed to. You know, and the only other time I've probably seen it was maybe Beyonce's halftime show, which was back in 2013, but she didn't have the sisterhood aspect, right? Like that was the piece that kind of took it to a whole new level for me where here were these two women, first of all, and the age component. I mean, I'm 49 next month, right? So to see a woman who's 50 on stage and another woman who's 43 to like, oh, to be at the height of their success and in like their full raw feminine power and then to be supporting each other. Oh, and then the backlash. Oh, I mean, it's just been tragic to see how many women are kind of seeing that display of raw feminine power and calling it inappropriate and calling it 
um, uh, it's hard to, I can't even put it to words. I'm, I'm flummoxed and flabbergasted by it all. So I just want to bring that and put that on the, the table of like, we've got some work to do here, ladies. Like if that's how raw feminine power is received out in the world, to me, that was so pure and such a glory of the height of raw feminine power, that halftime show. And to be misconceived so inappropriately, I, I'm a little heartbroken, to be honest. And at the same time, we got to get to work. Like We need to be the examples out in the world owning our raw feminine power. Is anybody with me on that? Uh, we do have a chat box. So some of us are live on Zoom and then some of us may be watching live in the Facebook group, the Feminine Operating System Sisterhood. So I'll try and be watching the chat in both places. So feel free to um, chime in. Uh, Victoria Groom, hi Victoria in the UK. You are in paradise. I know, it's true. I feel very lucky. I mean, imagine how much this supports me in the feminine operating system and raw feminine power, right? And on the big island is where they have the volcano. So Pele, the volcanic goddess in here is here and she is raw feminine power like at its core, right? So it feels like the perfect place to support me as we're having this conversation. Um, Coco says heartbroken was the word I used too. I know, right? And you know, part of um, the work around the dark feminine, which you all know, we've been on a journey of learning how to embrace our dark feminine, because to me, she is a cornerstone of stepping into our feminine operating system, right? So, so my desire, I will state publicly, is to write the operator's manual of how we use our raw feminine power in our feminine operating system. And it's this very comprehensive body of work that a colleague called, uh, this is like a PhD in vagina, Christina. <laughs> it's like, yes. It's true, thank you. And I realized it was way too comprehensive to start with that. So I'm pulling out a piece of the puzzle to talk about the dark feminine. And so our conversation today is all about the dark feminine and boy, is she present here um, on the big island of Hawaii. So we get to really feel into that. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, where do I wanna go from here? Okay, so first of all, I started talking about the dark feminine last July, realizing, because I, I run my business through pussy, through listening to my body and through listening to inner guidance and deeply surrender to the divine, right? Like it's super important for me to be in soul alignment the best that I can, right? And so I heard, okay, you feminine operating system is too comprehensive, pull out a piece of the puzzle, start with the dark feminine. Number one, it'll be good for you, Christina, to deepen into this even more, even though I've been talking about and working with the dark feminine for years. But I got that she would help me birth the rest of the body of work and build the business around it, right? So I'm getting gifted by the dark feminine through this process, like hopefully all of you. So I started talking about it last July, deeply listening from my feminine of how to, instead of pushing and hustling and striving to like make things happen, you know, I know how to launch. I don't know if any of you know my story, but I was a fancy pants business coach in the high six figures in my third year of business. So like I got chops. And there were parts of that that were amazing. I was teaching business um, in a very feminine-ish way and through the lens of um, the healing arts, it was called your ecstatic brand and helping people bring together all their gifts to create a career that doesn't exist yet and really like the thing they came here to do on the planet. So there were aspects of that that were awesome. And something inside me knew that wasn't it that I needed to do something different. And so the story goes, I had this machine of a successful coaching business with the big three-day lab events and the online launches and the high-end masterminds and the whole thing. And so I tried to turn the ship slowly at first, but it wasn't working. And so eventually the guidance I got was like, you need to go more drastic, Christina, and pull the plug. So I pulled the plug in mid 2014 and I've been profoundly dismantled since then. So this is like, I have my chops around the dark feminine. Like she came in with her sword and sliced me to slytherines for five and a half years now. Mind you, it's been an entire lifetime of her doing that, but this has been an incredible journey. I mean, my ego got smashed just into the rings, which is not a bad thing, but it's been intense. So I've been very dismantled. So I know of which I speak. And if I can shorten the learning curve for anyone, because if you guys are in the coaching industry, excuse me, you ladies are in the coaching industry, 
then you may have noticed plenty of people are feeling unsatisfied with their businesses. Many people have pulled the plug. But as far as I know, I don't know anyone that pulled the plug back in 2014. So I'm on like the forefront of the wave here of like something needs to change. So let me share with you what I've learned so that I can shorten the curve for you and that we can all step into more alignment and do our business from our feminine. Okay, so that's the backstory. So started talking about the feminine, uh, the dark feminine in July, and I was having to let go of all the old ideas of how to launch and copywriting and um, business brain and man mode and allow it to ripen and fatten and gestate, right? Like these are all feminine qualities from the feminine archetype. And it goes without saying, let me just to want to like get my context in here. When we talk about masculine and feminine, we're talking about the archetypal energies. We're not talking about gender. So these are the two energies of the universe. I could just as easily say yin and yang, left brain and right brain, lunar and solar, right? Like it's, they're just words. And I know we can get a little bit caught up in that, but really we're just talking about the yin and yang, the energy of the universe, right? So having to step into my yin power to birth this body of work around the dark feminine is being interesting. So now we're in February. I can't do the math, but I think that's seven months. Like that's a long launch time period in the coaching industry, but it's been a process that's been unfolding, right? And I've had to really trust that. And I feel like it's finally birthed. It's so exciting. So we did the 10 love letters from your dark feminine. Hopefully some of you were a part of that. I know many of you had really powerful experiences, which is awesome. I feel so grateful to feel how me stepping into my power to get my ass out into the world, to share my gifts has helped in, in rippled outward and supported many of you, right? This is how it works. The world needs all of us to be doing that, right? So now we're going to do some classes. Today's our first one in Power Leaks. We're going to dive into the content super shortly. I just love to give context to sort of weave everyone along on the journey. Um, and we're going to do probably a couple more classes. And then for those of you who do want to take this deeper, now today's class is going to be a class. Like there's going to be a lot of content that is a standalone and I'm thrilled to share as much content as I can with you. And some of you may want to have the actual experience of the program itself on the Dark Feminine. So we're starting on February 17th and I finally got the invitation page done. So I'll share that at the end of the call. So this is like... It feels a little bit like an unveiling, you know, like a birthing. I get to share the actual course with you finally. There's no obligation to join. Like the right women will know it's meant for them. And today we're going to have great content no matter what. And I just want to like be here with you for a moment. If you can just celebrate with me, like I'm birthing, like finally. Like that's a big ass deal, right? Like forget about the salesy things and the whatever and the pitches and the offers. It's not about that. I'm birthing something that's uniquely mine into the world. And I want that for all of you too. Like if I could tell you how passionate I am about power and purpose and like helping women like really claim their bodies of work, I can't even, I like short circuit, I get so excited. So let me model it for you in this moment and then I desire it for all of you too. Okay, are we ready to dive into our physics class on power? I feel like I need classes and a lab coat. Let me just see. Oh, Kim and Uma are on Facebook. Hi, guys, ladies. Oh, I gotta stop that. Um, thank you for your cheering me on. I appreciate it. Okay, so power. Well, first, actually, a little bit of backstory. And so the dark feminine, right? <sighs> the feminine is naturally dark. She is the black side of the yin yang symbol. The feminine is the receptive, the yin part of the engine of the universe. It is naturally dark. There is nothing bad or wrong about the dark. It's really just our societal condition and that conditioning that has says that has said that. So the dark feminine to me is our deepest yin. She is the great mystery. She is uh, embodied by the Hindu goddess Kali when she comes in with her sword and she just slices away everything that does not serve you out of truth and love. This is the dark feminine. She holds the keys to your greatest power. No joke. And I believe she's the future of leadership. So if you want to be on the forefront with me, this is it. Like I cannot convey that enough. Everyone will be talking about this at some point. 
if they're not yet, well, we know they're not yet because I have to do a lot of work to educate people on who the dark feminine is. But anyway, they will be talking about this. Just like I heard the call to pull the plug on my business back in 2014, this is the future. So if you like to be in the future like me and on the forefront, pay attention and see where you were meant to plug into this journey of like what I'm sharing around the dark feminine, okay? Because the dark feminine, like she knows when you're in your power and she knows when you're not and she knows where you're leaking it. And so she comes in to kill you with her sword, to destroy you, to break you apart so that you can get clicked into more proper alignment like a chiropractic click of the soul, right? I also think of it too, I've been using this analogy, you know, when they talk about how if a person broke a bone and then it reset improperly, most of us are living our entire lives like that. We are improperly set broken bones, right? Like we all got broken somewhere along the way. I mean, life just does that to us. It's, it's natural and normal. And you got to get healthy though, because there's important magnificence that wants to stream through us. And we have to learn how to heal the broken bone and reset it properly and allow power to stream through us so that we can use it to create, right? So important. So the dark feminine comes in and cracks your bone to reset it. And she does that by bringing in life experiences that cause what uh, one of my mentors, uh, Mama Gina or Gina Tomashauer, she calls it a rupture. You know, so when you come in and uh, when she comes in and you, all of a sudden your relationship ends or you go through a divorce or you have a health issue that really takes you down or maybe you get into a bad car accident. Like it's something that comes in and creates a pattern interrupt that makes you question the way you've been doing things. And there's nothing else to do but to get transformed to the other side, right? That's your dark feminine. But she's doing this out of love and truth and wanting you to be in alignment with your soul and surrender to the divine. So we want to learn how to fall in love with our dark feminine. Like I'm doing all this because I feel so um, in love with her and I want everyone else to feel the same. And she's definitely streaming through me in this whole process and has been a part of it the entire time. Like I had all these colleagues say to me, Christina, can you change the name of the course? Do you really have to call it dark feminine? And I was like, um, yeah, because I'm in devotion to her and that's what she wants it called. So everyone else is going to have to get over that or they're not ready and they're not ready and that's okay. But the rest of you are. And like, those are the ones that I'm streaming to and transmitting to. Right. So thank you for being here and hearing the call because more than likely the dark feminine has been calling your name because all of us are going through intensity right now. All of us, the entire world is intense. It gets more and more intense by the day. This is the dark feminine trying to like rip us a new one in order to get into our right alignment. So who's ready to learn more about the dark feminine and power? Can I get a, some hands or a chat or something? Oh, I see a thumbs up. Thank you. Let's see, Faye. Nice. Thank you for be, having your video on. Totally understand for those that don't, but it's nice to see a face. Anyone online? Oh, we've got Michelle. We've got Rachel. Awesome. So we've got some fun people with us um, in the Facebook group too. Okay. All right. So power. This is like my favorite topic. Okay. Hang on. All right. I'm going to geek out a little bit because I want you to hear the backstory. So I don't know, I'm a why learner. So when I understand why I can really get behind something, I don't think everyone's like that. So bear with me if you're not a why learner, but it's all going to come like, I want to give the backstory so your left brain can get on board, but I'm really wanting to rewire you from your left brain to your right, right? But I want to talk to your left brain first. And then I promise we're going to bring it into the body. Okay. So power. I was trained 20 years ago in a modality called polarity therapy, and it was basically about balancing energy. It was very complex and so much more than that, but that was what it was at its core. So polarity, as we all know, is like a magnet, right? We have a positive pole, we have a negative pole, and we have a neutral pole in the middle. And it is the positive and negative creating an arc of polarity that creates power. Okay, so some of us have maybe worked with this in relationship, you know, the masculine and feminine, and we know if both people are, you know, if there isn't a positive pull and a negative pull, then there's no electricity in the relationship. We've all been there. I've been there anyway. So this is how power works. And ideally power is flowing. Like we said earlier, 
but power isn't always flowing because if something happens where the power kind of doesn't flow, then it builds up a charge and then they're static and then it can't flow and then we don't have power. So this is what happens when we have a deep wound in our life, right? Like we have a deep wound, we feel a big emotion, we don't know how to feel the emotion. And so emotions are energy in motion. Ideally, we feel the emotion, we're done with it, we're complete on the other side, it's done. But instead, we, we the emotion comes up, we freak out because no one taught us how to be with them, we stop the emotion. And so we stop the energy in motion. And then that starts to create a charge that sort of impedes the flow of energy. Does that make sense so far? So we're going further. So that being said, if we've got our positive pole, our negative pole, neutral pole in the middle, in this day and age, this is where the law of attraction doesn't work. Because if you focus only on the positive, then you don't have an arc of polarity. Like you are not a magnet. You are like uh, imbalanced and have no power. Like it's that simple. So if you try and avoid the dark, you're missing out on power. And so the real name of the game is to embrace both. And we don't have to only live in the dark, but we definitely don't want to only live in the light. We want to live in the flow between them. We want to learn how to ride the wave of life. Life goes up and it goes down. It's the yin and it's the yang, right? We have a polarity and a duality in our life. Now, for those of you who are super spiritual, you're going to be like, but I want to transcend duality. Great awesome. But guess how you do it? By embracing both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> like this is what I learned in polarity therapy. If you can embrace the positive pull and the negative pull at the same time, it brings you into the center, the neutral pole, and you transcend. So I want you to get how simple this actually is. So this is the dark feminine is calling all of us to embrace and dive into our negative pole because we don't do it because we live in kind of a dumbass society that taught us to really focus on the positive because we're scared because no one taught us how to be with it, right? So those of you brave enough to be exploring this, we need to like really dive into the dark so that we can have all of our power. Is that making sense? Let me just check in, see, let me know if there's questions. Okay, no, no questions, no comments. Okay, so there's more, but that's like the simplest basic way to put it, right? Okay, so that's ideally how power is moving. We embrace both ends of the spectrum. We have an arc of polarity, the power is flowing. I don't know a single person alive on the planet that's living like that, myself absolutely included, right? Okay, so here's the reality. <laughs> like I said earlier, we have wounding, uh, we, ha we feel a big emotion. We don't know how to feel the emotion. And so we squash it and then it builds up the charge and then the flow is not happening. So in that charge, that's where you start to create a power leak because the power needs to move somewhere. And if it's not flowing in an arc of polarity or being used to procreate, to create, then it leaks out in the holes in your container of your being. Right. And when that, see, okay, back up again, second, a second too. So raw feminine power wants to create. That's it. So raw feminine power to me is what exists in the universe before the big bang. It is the formless primordial raw material of this of the universe like it's pure chaos it's like pure potential but it has no form right and it's scary as fuck like it creates black holes and such right so this is why the masculine archetype which is form and wants to create and create form out of it is terrified by the formlessness of it because we live in a society that's very tactile and tangible right okay so this is our raw feminine power it's pure potential primordial material of the universe that wants to create and we all have i call it a fire hose of the divine streaming through us like we are all expressions of the divine longing to know itself through us, through our particular sacred geometry. And so that's some of the raw feminine power wanting to stream through us. And ideally, this hose is unkinked, and it's flowing. And we're using that fire hose of the divine to create, to bring our purpose into the world, right? That's the ideal. And instead, 
we've all got fire hoses that are like kinked and <laughs> and like this and so the power is all freaking out and then you can imagine you know when there's like a pinhole oh, i've never used this analogy oh i love it when there's like a pinhole in the garden hose and it just leaks out those are power leaks because that's like your power not having a you not knowing how to house your own power and sit in the high sensation of it means the power has to leak out in the holes of your garden hose, right? Makes perfect sense. So you can see what your power leaks look like in your world by the amount of drama you have in your life because raw feminine power must create. You can use it consciously to create your purpose into the world, or if it leaks out, it unconsciously creates by chaos and drama, it almost gets projected into your outer world and creates the drama, right? So when you have a fight with someone, you know, when you're getting caught up in Facebook posts, you know, when you are staying busy, 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 you know, I mean, that's a simpler one, so that's not necessarily drama, but more like, again, the divorce and the accident, like, that's a way that you're dissipating your raw feminine power because you don't know how to house it. And so it leaks out. And then you get to be like, oh, this thing is happening to me. And, and we get to play the victim card, which I mean, I still, you know, we all still do it. It's human, right? But we need to get out of that, ladies, like big time. Calling myself out. I'm calling all of you out too, right? We have this feeling like stuff is happening to us. Well, the dark feminine wants to show us that's not true. And she wants to lead us into full sovereignty. So we know how to create our own reality instead of allowing it to happen to us. Cool? Okay. So the power leaks out. It projects into the outer world. It causes chaos because that's its natural state if you don't know how to use the chaos, right? Has anyone watched um, The Witcher on Netflix? Because there's an incredible dark feminine character. Oh my God, it's super fun to just, it, it's just very fun show but there's a dark feminine character and she's trained by a, like a you know a master of sorts and I forget the phrase but it's something like you need to use your chaos you know it's like exact I'm like oh my god they get it so yes we need to learn how to use our chaos and to house it and to take that raw formless power and allow it to procreate right okay so power leaks out, creates the drama, then we get all caught up in the drama. And then we don't use the raw feminine power to create our purpose. And we're like, oh, wait, I can't do the thing because of this drama. And it's such a cop out. Loving, I say this lovingly. Again, we all have them. But it's a cop out because the question to ask yourself is what's not getting created because of this drama in my life? I'm just going to let that land. So if you have drama in your life, what are you not creating with your raw feminine power that's part of your magnificent purpose? Because you have to take care of this drama. So I'm gonna pause there for a second. There's more and we're gonna have an experience in the body, but I wanted to see, is this landing? I wanna get some feedback. So does anyone wanna share? Or, oh, I will say I am going to probably, not probably, I am going to share this video uh, on my personal Facebook page. So if you don't want to share anything too personal, I totally understand. Right now it's just streaming in our Facebook group, the Feminine Operating System Sisterhood. But I would like to share it widely because I just want to see who needs to hear this conversation. So just know that. But also if you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you. So we have the chat on Zoom and we have the chat on Facebook. Let me see if anyone's chiming in. Let me know if you have questions. Um, you know, if this isn't landing for you uh, or if I need to clarify something, I'm just trying to pull it up. Okay, no questions there. <laughs> Faye says, this is absolutely resonating and just the best. Thank you so much. Awesome. I like seeing your smiles, Faye, when I hit some good points. So thank you. I appreciate that. It's good. I need feedback because this is like, I'm out on the skinny branches talking about this stuff, you guys, you ladies. It's like, it's intense, you know? And even someone said to me the other day, well, who's out there talking about energy like you? And I'm like, nobody. Like, I figured this out from gathering all these, nobody taught me any of this. Like I got pieces of the puzzle from all these different pieces of people and, and modalities and trainings and amazing teachers in my life. I bless them, believe me. 
and I am weaving this together in a very particular way that is mine. So, um, and this is what we all get to do. Barbara says, it is resonating and explaining a lot about my current life. Thank you. I'm all ears and full body with you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. That's my desire is that I don't want to just be speaking to your heads. I want to be in the body. And I could probably slow down a little too so that I'm definitely in my body because it's a lot and I'm excited. And I'm in Hawaii. Have you heard the roosters? <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So that's the backstory. Let me pause for a second and tune in before I keep going. Let me just see if there's any more context or if we can go into an experience. Okay, great. Context is done. So then the name of the game is we need to heal the power leaks basically you know and meanwhile like I, I'd made a post on Facebook like you can see where you leak your power in other ways too social media staying really really busy uh taking another you know training of some kind and getting a certification uh it goes on and on and these are all ways where we're looking to dissipate and leak our power because we're not comfortable with it and we're scared of it now it's enormous power it is terrifying and it can destroy things for sure. I wrote a post uh, a few months ago. I was leading, I had a group called the Pleasure CEO Priestesses and we did a lot of in-person immersion work. And I had a client who was super powerhouse and she was having a moment where she was coming up against some emotion about her power and like, I can't let it out, Christina. It will obliterate you. Can anyone else relate to that? Like if we actually ever let the power out, it would obliterate people. And so we're trying to actually be good human beings to not let it out and take care of people. And in that moment, because, you know, I've been facilitating for 20 years and I just sort of channeled and tapped in and I said, okay. And I looked my client in the eyes and I said, so then obliterate me. And she was sat in front of this beautiful picture window in the Oakland Hills and I stood before her and I had no idea what was going to happen by the way I didn't know if I was going to be like fucked from the experience but I just got into my body and I just was in receptive mode and I said then obliterate me and she allowed herself like to just let all that power come through and guess what happened do you want to know I wasn't obliterated and in fact, I was turned on. It was extraordinary to see a woman give herself permission and permission from me to be in her full power. It didn't obliterate anybody. It filled me up and fed me. And so this is what we have wrong about our feminine power. It's all so clusterfucked wrong. Like I, I just can't even. So this is where we need to start to change the story. And it's all about our own fear of being in the power. And so that's what we have to change. And for me, that's what, for those of you that you know might wanna go deeper in the dark feminine program, like we're gonna learn how to house the power and do grounded practical tools and like, and techniques so that we, we heal our garden hose so it doesn't leak out anymore. And we learn how to be a fire hose of the divine and use it in our purpose, right? Like that I'm just so passionate about. Okay, so how do we heal the power leaks, right? Like, and how do we get comfortable in our power? Cause it's kind of, I think a two-step process. Like first we gotta heal and patch up the holes but then we have to learn how to get comfortable in the power. And actually it's probably a three-step process. Then we gotta learn how to use it. That's a whole other thing, right? So for me, just the dark feminine is just so much trying to get us into our full power. And um, I was sharing with a, a colleague who's, she, if you've seen me write about this, she was the one. So meanwhile, I've talked about the dark feminine with other colleagues. And like I said, they were like, can you change the name of the program, Christina? Or like, they were like, I don't know what you're talking about, Christina. And, you know, and so I was used to that. But then all of a sudden, one colleague who I wouldn't have thought would be interested in this material was like, you had me at hello, Christina. Like I'm tapping my toes, and, you know, waiting for you to be ready. And so I was like, wow, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Anyway, so I was, I've been like sharing you know, when I'm working on the invitation page and sharing like love letters, I'm like, give me feedback because I still, it's hard for me to know, like, am I on? <laughs> I'll say the first invitation page, I think I told the story I shared with her because I made that first back in December. She was like, 
Christine, I hate to tell you, but it's salesy. And I was like, fuck, but okay, you're right. Great. Good feedback. Thank you. Like, it's hard for me to tell because I'm still trying to get rid of my copywriting brain. And so, and that's what, in that conversation, she's like, I feel like you need to do this in a different way. Like, can you tell a story? And I said, well, I'm not very good at storytelling, but I had this, like, the dark feminine told me to write the love letters. She said, that's how I want you to share about me. And so I said, well, I have this idea about love letters from your dark feminine. She's like, great, that's it. So I thought, okay, stop the sales page. Let me come, let me do the love letters from your dark feminine. Let me get into that mindset and then I'll come back to it. So a week I was trying to get this invitation page done and I sent it to the same colleague and I was like biting my nails going, oh, I hope it's not too salesy and I got a thumbs up. So that's exciting and I'll, I'll share that with you later. Okay, so, oh. I was telling you that whole story because I was trying to come up with a tagline, you know, taglines. I mean, they're so not sexy. It's so not feminine, whatever. But still, if I'm going to call the program dark feminine, I do need something a little grounded in the tagline, right? So I had all these other long taglines and she, this colleague brilliantly said, I just keep hearing the phrase surrender to our power. And I, and I was like, that's a short tagline. I don't know if I can work it in the graphics. Like I so wasn't on board. And then yesterday in my meditation, I sat with the phrase, surrender to our power. Sur surrender to your power, surrender to your power. And all of a sudden I got it. And it was so deep and it was like, oh my God, that's it. Okay, done. And, and it couldn't be that simple. So now we're going to bring it into the body and talk about power. Now I will say, I'm just watching the time. Um, you know, this topic is so dimensional that it usually does want some space. So we may, I wanted it to be an hour, but I knew it was probably more like 90 minutes. So just to give you some um, ideas of, uh, we won't go the full 90 minutes, but just know we may go over the hour and if you can stay with us, great. And if you can't, uh, the replay will be in the Facebook group. Okay, are we ready to get into the body? So I have a few ideas and I like to kind of stay open to what wants to happen. So first I wanna give us the experience like I had in meditation around surrendering to your power. And let's just see, I'm a big experimenter. Uh, I, to me, that's exciting. Like I, I co-hosted a party when, with uh, my friend and colleague last week when I was in California and we, it was a light and dark party. So we had people come dressed in light and dark and, and I had said to him, can we lightly seed my dark feminine program? And so I didn't seed it at all, but it was just fun to get to explore my dark feminine. Anyways, we led some exercises when we, during the course of it. And I, and I was like, I'm gonna experiment. So I tried to lead at like a social party and it was an experiment. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. So I'm okay with that. And um, that's part of how my genius in a way. Um, I brag. And so anyway, we're going to experiment today. Okay, so let's start to transition out of our brains. Okay, wait, I'm just listening. Would you like a visual of me getting into my power first before we get into it together? Or would you want to go right into the bodies? Let me know because I'm open either way. If you feel like you want the visual, right? If you I think when it's online, it's a little bit behind. So I don't, it's hard to get instant answers. Me first. Okay, Coco says me. Okay, great. And Barbara, great. Um, <laughs> faces into the body first. Okay, well, we'll do it all. I promise we'll get there. Thank you for everyone's um, input. Okay, so I brag. So in my world, we brag. Uh, there's a long story behind that. And then also in, in my mentors, my former mentors were in Mama Gina's world, we brag. So that will be an important part of the program as well. But anyways, I bragged that I was at a gathering of colleagues of industry leaders uh, two weeks ago. And I asked them to witness me in my power because I knew that's what I needed. I didn't need business coaching. And so I'm gonna do for you what I did for them. And just imagine I did this in a room of like industry leaders. And so it was powerful and amazing. Okay, so let me see. I'm gonna back up and see if, you can, if I can get full length and hopefully it's just a few minutes, but I'm just gonna call it up through my body and, and you'll see a difference because right now I'm in my head, right? I'm talking, I, I'm trying not to be, but it's just natural, right? So let's see, okay. That didn't work. Hang on. Okay.
Okay, so let me know what you're seeing or not seeing or what you experienced from that. I feel like, could you feel me sort of unfurling my kinked toes? I mean, I had to get out of human and allow sort of my primal. <sighs> so I, I'm not in this all the day, every day. Believe me, most people don't even see my power when they meet me unless I'm like leading something. It's hilarious, but I want to change that. Okay. Did you have an experience? Chime in because I want to get us into our bodies, but I want to see. I'd love to get some feedback. If, if you saw it, maybe you didn't see it. I certainly felt it. <laughs> but my spine unwinding to allow <laughs> the power to come through. Okay. Anyone? Anyone? And then we'll get into you. You don't have to do it like that, by the way, in case that's a bit much. Okay, no feedback. All right, well, we'll move on. Ah, Faye says, I felt it through my body and let out an audible noise as you released your shoulders. My, my body is definitely wanting to move. Awesome, thank you. I know, I know, I hold a lot of tension in my shoulders. That's just in a lifetime of that. So I'm working on it. But think, yeah, I mean, and so the, uh, I guess chime in if, you, if it was scary. Was it scary? And or Faye, it sounds like it fed you, right? For me to get into and Faye's, Faye's nodding. So this is what I want us to understand. Like, this is actually what our power can do. It can feed other women. And Again, I'm a little sad about the Super Bowl because it should have fed everyone, <laughs> but I don't know what to say about that. Um, some women are maybe aren't ready for it yet, but they'll get there and, and us getting into our power is going to help the story. Okay, so let's get into our own bodies and maybe if you, so you're welcome to do this more meditatively or if you want to get into uh, onto your feet and into your body if you're an embodiment person, let's do that. And I want to guide all of us to do that too, okay? So I would say Get into a position if you want to be sitting, you know, find what feels right. Faye says, I feel a heat rise through my body. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. All right. So I'm going to invite you to get into a position if you want to stand. Uh, if you're seating, that said seated, then stay seated. And <clears throat> first, I'm going to invite you if you feel willing. Bar Barbara says, I felt a focus watching you. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so if it feels okay for you, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes because I, I think it, we're very outward oriented creatures into the outer world. And you know, we kind of get our feedback from people. We wonder what other people are thinking about us. And really we need to let that go because we need to be tuned in on the inside. So if it feels right for you, close your eyes. And I want you to pull all your attention inward. And imagine, um, I say to my clients when we work privately together, like. Imagine that all of your uh, attention that goes into the outer world, like tendrils of, almost like tentacles of an octopus, right? Like we all are oriented into the outer world. So I want you to imagine that you're pulling in those octopus tentacles of your attention so that they all start to rein in and come inward inside you. You might imagine an octopus or a medusa or whatever it is, or like fishing lines, reel in all of your power, your energy, and your attention, and call it home. Imagine that there's a magnet at the 
center of your spine that is calling all of you home. And as you do that, find your breath, right? Like, ah, eyes closed if that feels right. My eyes are open, just to kind of cold focus, but you can keep yours closed. So you just notice where the breath goes inside your body. You don't need to change it or make it longer. It's perfect the way it is, but notice it. As you're pulling in all your attention, notice the breath as it goes up and down the body. And if you can, I say this to my clients, let the breath itself be sensual. Now that may be kind of a unique exploration, but try it out. See if you can imagine, maybe it's a little slower. How could the breath itself be sensual? Maybe the body moves a little. Maybe you imagine like a softening on the inside as the breath moves through your body. Great. And then now I'm going to invite you to bring your attention down to your pelvic bowl. I, I do use the word pussy in my personal life. If that word doesn't work for you, feel free to translate it to vagina, vulva, or yoni. But I'm going to use pussy because that's what's true for me. And so I want you to just put your attention on pussy and imagine that you can breathe in and out of your body from this place because our power comes from our body, right? And it definitely comes from pussy too and in our whole pelvic bowl. So a way to start to get connected there is to breathe in and out with pussy, anchoring your attention and awareness at this base in your body. And then pussy loves compliments. So if you feel able to do this, I invite you to give her some compliments. Tell her, you know, you love her beauty or her power, or you, you know, offer her some gratitude. If you can, give her some love and notice what happens in your body as you do. Wow, I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel all of you connecting with this place of power in you. Great work. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now that you're connected to your body and have all of your power brought home inward, I'm going to invite you to almost like a mantra, repeat the phrase to yourself, surrender to your power. And as you do that, I'm gonna invite you to have a little bit of movement. So one possibility is to have like a, a little bit of an undulation of the spine. This is what Gay and Katie Hendricks call a yes breath, like a little bit of movement, right? Or you could also just gently move your hips. You might uh, do light hip circles, or maybe it's like a figure eight. But we basically, you know, when we, our body is not moving, energy is not flowing, right? So we want to have, you saw how much I had to move to get into my power. So you don't need to move as big as I did, but I want you to have a little bit of movement. So it could be a little side to side, almost like your seaweed in an ocean, you know, moving in the waves. So whatever feels right for you, have a little bit of movement. Actually loosen up your jaw too. We all need to do that more. And breathe, don't forget to breathe. Okay, so we've got a little bit of movement. We're staying in fluidity and then work with your mantra. Surrender to your power. Let's see what happens. breathing, keep moving. It's 
Surrender to your power. Give yourself permission. You know, see, see whatever's needed. Maybe you need to say yes or give yourself permission in order for it to flow. Experiment. And someone, some of you may not be feeling anything and that's okay too. We're trying this out, but keep, keep at it. Fake it till you make it if you need to. Surrender to your power. too like it does help if the shoulders go back you know you might um, when you inhale maybe the shoulders lightly go back and when you exhale they can round forward just to have a little bit of movement so inhaling shoulders back gentle movement exhaling shoulders forward surrender to your power oh my gosh i'm enjoying it <laughs> i hope all of you are enjoying it and I would love some feedback soon, but take a few, we'll take a few more minutes here. And see too, if, if you do feel the power start to come through, and it's okay if you don't, you know, we're all figuring this out together. If you do feel more power moving through you, use your breath to breathe it through the rest of your body, almost like harvesting it. Maybe you feel it in a particular place in your body, but use your breath to like feed the rest, you know, like the ends, the, your limbs and, uh, Almost like it's a, it's a, it's a word I'm looking for. It's kind of like watering a parched body, right? Surrender to your power. Okay, we'll take, let's see, two more minutes here. Let me know if anyone needs help or it's like you need, um, you know, you're welcome to come on to the Zoom too if you wanna come on video, if you want. Like I said, this will be out in the public, so keep that in mind. But let me know if anyone needs support or you can type it into the chat. And otherwise we'll just have a couple more minutes to explore and then I would love some feedback. So surrender to your power. Mm. All right, take a couple more breaths. Make sure to harvest as much power as you can through the rest of your body. Feel gratitude for yourself that you showed up for this class today and that you're doing this work that's majorly on the forefront and on, and on the ed edgy terrain. And thank your body and thank pussy if that feels right for you. And your power. Your power is magnificent. Your power is incredible. I want more of it from you. The world wants more of it. So love up your power and feel some gratitude for how powerful you are, woman. Actually, before we finish up, let's, one more experiment, a uh, mini one. See what happens, if you want, you get to choose, but see what happens if you call in the dark feminine to move through you as well. See, see what that invitation does to willingly, if you want, because she could, I don't know what she could do, but it's definitely an experiment. So see if you can have an experience of allowing your dark feminine to merge with you or to come through you and see if there's a love there or not. 
We're experimenting and exploring. Feels good to me. All right. So take a last breath. Feel all the things. And then we'll come back together. And I would love some feedback on how that was for you when you're ready. And it's okay too if you didn't feel anything. That's also feedback. And don't don't be hard on yourself. Don't make that wrong. It's all disinformation, right? Just like we want to embrace the positive and the negative and the neutral pole in the middle. It's like truth is truth. That's all right. So who wants to share with me? Beatrice says, thank you, Christina, for this beautiful moment. I feel refreshed and electrified, but peaceful. It's amazing. Thanks. Yay. That's awesome. Thank you, Beatrice. <sighs> I feel peaceful. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, what happens when we stop being in our heads and get into our bodies, which is where our power is as women. So anyone else want to share? Just checking in on the Facebook group. Faye says, my body needed that so badly, I felt back to myself and full of pleasure. Nice, thank you. It is, power is pleasure, right? For me, when we allow our power to come through, it's a type of life force. We could call it turn on, we could call it orgasm, right? Like part of my training is I was in the orgasmic meditation world and did their coaching program because I wanted to learn about the body of work. And they use orgasm as a broader term, like orgasm meaning life force energy. And that climax is a part of orgasm, but not the only thing, right? So for me, orgasm is like a life force energy. When we allow our power to come through us, it's pleasurable for sure. Um, Coco says it's highly erotic. Nice. I like hearing that. See, it's turned on. It's power. It's electricity. It's power and pleasure. This is like the fact that we're afraid of it is almost mind numbing. Um, Faye says, when I called in the dark feminine, she came quickly and spoke to me and brought me to tears. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. I love that. Um, I also want to say, that I, I have been saying, um, I keep saying that no one woman has this all figured out, like how to be in her feminine operating system, how to live from her feminine power, how to do business from her feminine. There is not a single woman on the planet that has this figured out, and I certainly don't either. I really believe that we need to open source this as a sisterhood because no one, there's not going to be a person. We're, it's, we're only going to get it as a sisterhood. So I keep saying to everyone, I'm like, I don't know if I'll figure it out, but I'm going to keep creating spaces where we get to figure this out together as a sisterhood. And so again, for those of you that, you know, might like to do the dark feminine program, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, it's going to be a space of, you know, I'm not the guru. I, I have a lot to teach. I've been on this journey a long time. I have a lot to share, but there's also room for everyone's wisdom where we learn from each other. And that's just so important to me. So toward that end, from doing the love letters to your dark feminine and people chiming in about their experience of it, and particularly you, Coco, talking about how you called in the dark feminine to move through you, I'd never tried that right? Like here I am deeply devoted to the dark feminine living my life for her, but I'd never quite tried it that way. And when you shared that in one of your posts, I was like, oh, I need to try that. And it is interesting. It's a different way for me to relate to her. So I want to thank you for sharing your experience that gifted me. And now I get to gift others. Like this is how it works. Rippling, 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 right? So thank you for that, Coco. Okay. Um, let's see. Barbara says, I feel more quieted, love the feel, borderline wanting to lay down to rest for a nap. 
but that's okay too. That's great. Victoria says, I feel energized and turned on Woo-hoo! when doing it myself and when seeing you do it, Christina. Nearly didn't share that. Oh, honey, it's certainly welcome here. I'm, I'm happy for us to be totally turned on and lit up and erotic and all of those things because I'm, I'm very passionate about normalizing these things, right? Like, you know, I grew up to, uh, I didn't grow up in the UK. <laughs> I know it's even more challenging for you guys. I have a lot of clients in the UK and when I have to do this work with them, I have to work a little bit extra hard to get through some of that conditioning. But still, I grew up with, you know, the, uh, the messages of don't be inappropriate, you know, I mean, all these things, right? So, but if we allow it, if we're comfortable with our eroticism and our turn on and our feminine power on the inside, I believe that it, people will be more comfortable with it on the outside too. And that, and, and we want to neutralize it and normalize it. So it becomes more normal. Okay. Coco says, thank you. <laughs> Victoria says, yep, the Brit thing. I know. Believe me, I know. I love you Brits. And it is, you, you, you guys have a few extra layers to work through for sure. Okay. So. We talked about power. I gave you my physics lesson. I know it's not real physics, but to me, it's dark feminine physics. Um, you got context about like power and how to work with it. And we talked about power leaks and where we're leaking power and what it looks like in our outer world. And then we had an embodiment experience. So would anyone like to hear about the invitation to be in a deep container of sisterhood to explore the dark feminine. This is my unveiling of the course. I don't, I don't want to like, you know, spew it out if people aren't interested, but if you want to hear more, let me know and I'll give you the link, but I'm going to hang out here. If I, no one wants it, then, oh, Faye's giving me a thumbs up. Anyone else? You know, it's the feminine we don't do wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, right? Like we, we work by invitations. Like I want to be seductive here. And I, and I trust that you will all know if you have a resonance in your body or not, right? Like I'm not going to convince the program that I, like I'm building the container of it, right? But it's between you and your dark feminine if this is meant for you. And it's, it's, a, it's a deep invitation and like it's not for it's not for everybody not even close and when i really got to like i had some ideas of what i thought this program was going to be and then the dark feminine kind of schooled me and i'll share the behind the scenes about that after i share the program she schooled me and changed it a little bit which i'm still actually a little resistant to which is hilarious but i'll share that story uh she wants people really ready to do this deep work so it's a deep program and so i I really want it to be available for the masses because I think it's so important. And, and she was kind of like, nope, not yet. Not like you need some good, you need big players to come in now to do the deep work. And then you'll all help anchor it onto the planet more. And then later you can make this more available for the masses, Christina. So it's exciting. Okay. Barbara gave me a yes. Yay. All right. So without further ado, I will give you the, um, the, web page for the invitation to see if you would like to come into this container with us and then i'll share a little bit about the course so it's at darkfeminine.com exciting okay so the program and the ex like it's going to be experiential right like you got a little taste of embodiment of what we did today but this is really my expertise is leading women into the body to create true transformation so this program is practical it's got like um, it's simple, you know, it's like, I want to break down these complex things that I've been studying for 20 years, but just like break it down. You're, you're all busy. You're all busy. You got things to do on the, you know, on the planet. And I am some of your moms and all of that. So I want to keep this as simple as possible, but as deep as possible and as effective and efficient as possible so that we can do the deep work, create some change, and then have more power available to totally pour into our businesses and our purposes, right? Like to me, I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a purposeaholic and I'm a poweraholic. <laughs> I'm like, I am obsessed by these things. So the program is going to be like a process. I mean, it's really a giant ritual on some level. And I want it to be a very safe space for us to do the deep work so that we can all go big, right? So there's some information on the page with like, this program is not for people who 
uh, it's if you are still working through a lot of PTSD and trauma, this isn't the course for you because they really want you to, you need one-on-one -on -one support with a therapist. So I wanna say that outright. I do have training, some training in trauma and I do have quite a bit of experience with it. Um, but this needs to be for people who've done a fair amount of work and really want the next level deep dive of it all, right? Okay, so the process we're gonna go through and uh, it was funny, I went through such a journey too. Like originally they had, uh, there's there's six modules for lack of a, I can't find a sexier word than module yet, but so there's six modules that we're gonna do every other week because I want some spaciousness. I know we're all super busy and full up and it's a process. So the first module is we die together. And I just am so turned on by that. And meanwhile, it's so edgy. I don't know in the past that I would have been brave enough to put that on a sales page, right? But I'm really getting of like the dark feminine wants me to, I mean, that's hot to me. I, I, I worry it's not to many others, but like that's hot to me. Like we need to die together, y'all. Like we need to die to the old ways. We need to surrender like what hasn't been working. We need to let go of our conditioning. Like we need to learn how to die. Like. The world is in a cycle of birth, life, death. Repeat, birth, life, death. And we like birth, we like life, we don't like death, but then we don't know how to be reborn. So it's very important. The dark feminine is very much about the realm of death and rebirth. So first step, we die together. I just think that's so hot. Okay, I, I should probably pull up the page. <laughs> Let's see, I'm like a little too hopped up on adrenaline to remember all the pieces. Okay, well, hang on one second. Darkfeminine.com. I was trying not to have too many windows open, so hang on. Okay, there's a lot of fun information on there. Okay, so step two is, oh yeah, we gather raw feminine power together. And so this is where we'll go in even deeper to this topic of like how it works, how we can start to shift it. I'll give you lots of tools of how to work with power and how to heal up the patches um, so that we get more comfortable with it because it's just so important. We have to learn how to be in our power. So step two is we gather raw feminine power together. Step three, we expand sex power together. And this is also very exciting because our sex has so much power in it. And again, I don't know anyone who's using all that power. We've had so many wrong messages about it all and shame and things so we've shut that down but we need the turn on and so we need the turn on because we want to bring pleasure to our life but here's the other big piece of this puzzle i haven't even talked about so much is the way the dark feminine comes in to free us is to die is to learn how to be in the wave of our emotions is to learn how to be in our power is to step into our turn on but really she wants us to learn how to get off on every aspect of life. When we can get turned on even by the drama, when we can get turned on by, dare I say, Trump, when we can get turned on by the rooster, like that's when you're free, y'all. Like it's a different thing. So there's, there's techniques and there's simple, simple exercises of how we start to change that of like, I hate these things and I want to rail against them. Totally understand. That's an emotion and we love that too. But the highest of the highest of the high of the work is to love it all and to get off on it all. And so in that step, we learn about our turn on. We're going to get into the body. We're going to learn how to access turn on in the body. There's so much. Um, and you're going to learn how to use that to turn on every aspect of your life, the good and the bad. Okay. So step four, we learn emotional mastery together. And this is where we start to embrace the emotions of grief and rage and sadness and all of them. Like I've studied emotions from all these different modalities and I'm kind of bringing together like the simplest way to be with this of like, you know, we have peaks and we have valleys in our emotions, right? And ideally, again, we wanna learn how to get off on all of them, but we have to learn how to embrace them and we have to learn how to let them move through our bodies. So I'm gonna, guide you through that process and we're going to go through the process together to learn our emotional mastery and that's going to help us get free okay and then step five we go into the basement together so for me the basement is where our core wounds live where our shadow pieces live you know all the things that we've kind of tossed over our shoulder um, and didn't want to be with and so 
you know, I, I came up with this analogy because I feel like there's a lot of amazing, good intentioned people out there who think they're doing really deep work. But what happened is most of us have a lot of core wounds and a lot of stuff down in our basement and we didn't, no one taught us how to be with it. Right. So the best way, best thing we figured out was to like put down a false floor on top of the basement and then built a whole house on top of it. And then we think that's our whole life. And so a lot of good intentioned people think they're doing deep work, but they're just going down to the false floor and I can feel it. And then they're sort of touting their vulnerability on Facebook and it's a bit of crocodile tears and I'm sort of like rolling my eyes a little, God bless them. But at the same time, like the real work is like, you got to go down into the damn basement. Like we're not talking about, you know, I don't even know how to put it. I'm a little feisty now, like sissy deep work. Like we're talking about the deepest of the deep work. Like we're going into the bowels, if you will, because we need to be comfortable being able to do that. We're going into the shadow. We're going into the basement. I will guide you there and give you tools and techniques. Okay. So that's important because you know how much power is in your basement? That's where all your power lives is in the basement caught up in the undigested emotions and in the, like, you know, the, um, what do you call it? rejected shadow pieces, like all of it's in your basement. So I got to take you there to go pick up the power, right? Okay, together, we're going together. Okay, and then step six is we embrace dark feminine alchemy together. So I want you, I want everyone to leave with like a recipe and a formula of how to move through life moving forward, how to ride your waves, how to be with your power, how to feel your feelings, how to die. Like I, I, I kind of like, this is my first step of writing the operator's manual. Like I wanna give you the operator manual around the dark feminine as a place to start. And so we will be building toward that, but then you're gonna finish with like a, I have been in certain communities and some of the rest of you, uh, some of you on this call also have, uh, in some communities who were like, formula is not feminine, but you know what? I don't give a fuck. Like, it's like, so we need, I gotta speak to your left brain to walk you into your right. So sometimes we need the formulas and the, and the recipes and at some point they'll drop away, but it's a place to get started. So step six is like kind of putting it all together and like how to live it in life, right? Um, someone, the woman who helps me out at all my uh, in-person immersions and retreats because I, I was going through a phase of like, what makes me different from other people out there? And now I think I understand it more. But at the time, she's like, you're really doing life skills, you know, around the feminine. And I was like, that doesn't sound sexy, but that is sexy. And you're right, you know, because many people can talk about the feminine, but I'm about efficiency and like really changing shit in our lives. Like, that's why I've been doing transformation for 20 years. Like, I'm efficient at this stuff, you know, so, so that's the experience. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, the, the, the program will be delivered in bite-sized video chunks. So module um, will have a bite-sized video so that you can watch at any time to make it super convenient for you. There will be, you know, uh, activities if you'd like to participate, like, uh, you know, um, we call it homework, basically. You know, there might be a workbook. I'm kind of feeling into the exact specifics. There'll probably, there'll be some guided meditations. Um, we'll do some embodiment rituals. There's gonna be a lot of pieces ideally simple as possible to sort of get the most bang for our buck and start to create some deep change. Um, we will have six um, hot seat coaching calls so we can come together and, and oh, that's not even really the right word, but basically like come together in sisterhood and I can answer questions and people can get support. Obviously we'll have a Facebook group too where you can support one another and, and obviously I will support as well. And when the dark feminine was setting this up, when it went from a program for the masses and instead to a program for like big players who want to do this deep work, I decided to put in a private coaching session too, because I just was like, this work is too deep. I don't want people to get stuck. You know, this is my expertise is to guide women into the power through the blocks, right? Like to feel what's in the way to heal that and to get to the power on the other side. And then if there's time, and if that's what you want, we can look at how this fits into your business too. You know, cause I was a fancy pants business coach charging $2,000 an hour and getting it around business, right? So I've got all of these skills to kind of bring together. Um, and so I'm really excited. Let's see, Beatrice says, your program is so appealing, dying together, brilliant, bravo, yes, awesome. I'm glad to say it. And I almost didn't go that far. I mean, this is the funny thing of like around power, right? Like I was totally edgy for me to do it. 
And then I finally was like, just fucking do it. Okay. Coco says your trans transition on the formula piece was priceless. I've been shown that as the next step by the dark feminine, but I've been resisting it as I felt it, it has not been feminine enough. Left, left brain to right brain connection. Yes, absolutely. I have no problem. Like I think I'm very feminine, I think, but I also have very strong left brain. So I like, I'm like, I got to help rewire women's brains and my own too. Left brain to right brain, left brain to right brain. We've got to like, you know, juice up our right brains more. Okay, so this experience of the dark feminine, uh, and I ended up using the tagline, surrender to your power, because that's what it is. For me, we're going into the dark feminine to own our power so that we can feed it into our purpose. Done. You know, this is not a nice little feminine course. Like this is like, I'm here to help the movement leaders like get clicked into position and have all the power they need to do the thing they came here to do done. And this is a piece of the puzzle that I don't see out there. And I really think is the forefront. I had a friend say to me, she's like, Christina, this sounds because she didn't quite understand what I was talking about with the dark feminine. She was one of those and also asked me to change the course of the program, the name of the course. And she said, you know, this feels a little bit like first time I tried to read the power of now, you know, by Eckhart Tolle. She was like, I didn't get it at all. I thought it was total gobbledygook. Like I wasn't into it in the slightest. But then two years later, I read it and ate it up. And so she's like, I have a feeling that's what you're talking about now. And I'm like, yes, that's it. Like, so how about you just come in now and like, get it now, whatever. Everyone has their own journey, of course. Okay. So this dark feminine program isn't for everyone. It will be for certain people. And it is, a, it's an investment. And this is the part that I had resistance towards. So I, I, you know, I will share that story with you of like, I originally wanted this to be a very low dollar amount to make this like be super accessible. And then it never landed. And then my coach coached me into a higher amount that still I didn't like, but she, it still never landed. And then she coached me again into like doubling the higher amount that I didn't even like to begin with, but it came from my body. And I, we got to that amount and my body said, that's what you need that's the investment of this program. And I was like, fuck, I hate you right now. Like that is not what I want to happen. And, and it's edgy for me. And this is on orders of the dark feminine. And it was interesting when the investment changed, I felt me change and I felt the, the container change. And I was like, oh, this will be smaller. And this will be like a deep dive for the right people who are ready to do this work. And they'll have to understand that this is the call and that it's a deep dive. So the program is three monthly payments of $700, or if you'd like to save $300, you can pay in full. So there, all the information is on that page. Uh, you can register there. If you have questions, let me know. I really wanna hold space for the right people to step into this. And we start on February 17th. The first module will be revealed on a Monday and then we'll have calls like the next week on a Thursday. And I have a feeling I'm gonna add quite a few other things in, but I wanna just, I don't wanna overwhelm people. Like I have a feeling I'm gonna add in embodiment rituals quite a bit, but uh, I wanna leave it for now. And there's some great bonuses too. So. The biggest bonus is the first 20 people that sign up, you can get an additional coaching session with me. My private co coaching sessions now pay me 750 an hour. So you sign up and you become one of the first 20, you get two private coaching sessions and that basically pays for the program on some level. So, so that's something like I wanted to again be, how seductive can I be? Like if someone's feeling a yes, like grab one of those first 20 spots and get the additional hour of coaching because then we have time to do any deep work we might need to do, but then I can also support you around your purpose and your business if you need that as well. Because most of my clients who come to me are women playing a big game in their business. And some are still starting out, but generally it's more the people further along. And, uh, and they're doing, they want to be in their feminine operating system. So it's this interesting blend of deep work into the dark feminine, some business coaching, but really connecting to the body and pussy to get our answers. So it's a very interesting blend. Uh, another bonus is I will gift you my seminal course called Find Your Ecstatic Brand. That was part of my uh, business in the past of how I helped people bring all their gifts together to create their ecstatic brand. And it's still where all of my private clients start to this day. And it has a lot of transmission in it. It's like if you're a healer 
type folk. Um, I create, I, I basically teach you how to create a personal brand, find your niche and create your signature um, high-end program all through the lens of energetic principles, like in alignment with your soul, which I, I've never kind of seen anyone else teach it in the same way. So that's available to you. That was a 997 um, you know, price point. So you can get that as a bonus. And then also, I think last bonus is uh, an interview with Jaya and her erotic blueprints. We're gonna go into that on some level because uh, it's a beautiful body of work. And it's very, it's going to be under the heading of us learning about our own erotic power and our turn on and, uh, and our, and our power. Yeah. Okay. So this is my invitation to you. I place it on the buffet before you to um, consider and see if it is a fit for you or not. I think it's good to have a yes or a no. And I just invite you to really listen to your body on this one. You know, some of you are going to be like, okay maybe there's like a bit of like excitement maybe fear and turn on but like that's turn on that's a yes on some level and some of you are like oh sounds cool not for me and that's okay too right like I know that this is a very specific experience for very specific people and I'm trusting the process like I'm deeply surrendered to the divine and this is going to be kind of woven into of like how do we live that way and still have successful businesses <laughs> and still do our work in the world and not sort of, um, you know, meditate in a cave all the time, right? So this is all kind of woven into it as well. I really feel like the dark feminine is guiding us into receiving more support from the divine and allowing this power, the fire hose of the divine to move through us, right? Like it's a very deep and rich experience. So let me know. Um, all right. Well, 90 minutes. I figured it'd be 90 minutes, but we're tidying up here. So that's pretty good. Let me know if there's any questions before we finish up. Um, you can reach out to me private message uh, or, or ret hit return on any of the emails if you'd like. And to finish up, let me know if you have any questions. And if you're willing, could you share a favorite moment from our class today? I think uh, it's a very important as women that we learn how to digest things because we don't usually take time to digest. And digestion can look like celebration or just kind of mulling things over, but it's important to, it helps us that just like when we eat food, it's important to glean the nutrients and let go of the waste and we digest, right? So it's, we need that. This will probably be woven into the program as well because it's super important. So I, I do this with my private clients at the end of a coaching call. I'm like, all right, tell me your three favorite moments from the call. And it just helps it all to land more. Uh, you know, my training is very much about in polarity therapy too, is like how energy steps down to the chakras, like how it goes from spirit into form. And so digestion really helps to bring things into form and to land it. So would anyone be willing to share a favorite moment or let me know if you have any questions and then we will finish up shortly. And then I get to go hang out in Hawaii a little bit. Coco says, thank you once again. Your transmission has helped me clarify so much of my own journey. It's late here in the UK. I feel I have much to say, but I need to head off. We'll post on Facebook page tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you for being here. I know it is a little bit late there for you guys in the UK, but I tried to keep it as early as I could in Hawaii so that I could hopefully get most people. So thank you. It's great to have you, Coco. I've really appreciated you sharing your journey in the Facebook group. It's, it's deeply touched me. Beatrice says, I appreciate the entire class. Thank you for your beautiful work and your bold authenticity is precious. Thank you, Beatrice. I appreciate that beautiful reflection and your witnessing. And I'm glad you got something out of it. Great. Barbara says, I'm feeling in contemplation about and about greatly curious about how to be with the dark feminine after we have accessed it to bring it out into the world. A new way of creating I'm curious about. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, you know, um, it's a great piece. Uh, let me show you what face it faces. What resonated the most for me was when you talked about power leaks, but what are they t taking power from you doing? So fucking true. I know, right? It is a sobering question. Um, so Barbara, let me feel into 
I know you're not asking a question, but let me see if there's anything to add to that and what you shared. I do, like, I feel like the dark feminine is tapped into, like I said, our raw power, the primordial building block of the universe, right? Like that raw chaos of raw creation. So she's tapped into that. And I think she wants us to use it. And then she's going to show us where we're out of alignment or where, because I really believe too, that anything happening in the outer world, like any drama that we have in our outer world is an invitation to come into the inner world to heal something. So often the dark feminine helps us create because she shows us where our power is not flowing and she brings in like a chaos of drama piece, whatever, to touch something on the inside that needs healing. I think I shared some of this. Um, so I don't know, Barbara, if you are in the Facebook group, but I shared, I had my own drama last week. Uh, I did a Facebook live about it and it was so intense. Um, I was in Oakland, California, staying with a friend who very generously let me borrow his second car. And the car got stolen out of the driveway because I left the keys in the car. Because I was in Oakland to work on my storage unit and downsize and I came back with all these bags and I like the, the keys were separate. I mean, all kinds of excuses and yet not, it was my fault, right? Meanwhile, we're up in the boondocks of the Oakland Hills. So random, I mean, people had to be literally walking by and trying the doors. So it was also like, this is dark, it had dark feminine written all over it, right? So I share, I share a whole Facebook Live about this, the process and it was so shocking. And then I had to tell him and it was his second car. So that was a little bit better. Anyway, it was horrifying. So ask me how much stuff that was trying to touch for me, like my own wounding, right? Like it was intense. I mean, I felt like a fuck up. I felt, you know, I've, I mean, it just hit all this guilt place. Like it's my fault, you know, like all this stuff. And so I really believe the dark feminine, like often she needs to come in with a vector of force that matches the energy, the power of the wound, if you will. So sometimes, you know, I was so surrendered to the divine and I still am. And I, a second it happened, I was like, mother. <laughs> like, okay, you're gonna have to figure this out. Like, cause I don't even know what I'm on the line for. Uh, financially yet we're still waiting i mean and, and there's a whole story I, I mean it just got even more bizarre too you can find that in the facebook group anyway all that to say i feel like that was the way the dark feminine came in meanwhile i'm birthing this course on the dark feminine right so i knew it was like she was trying to show me something to heal that i had to offer up and get rid of you know my guilt shame feeling like it's my fault you know like i had to heal some of that in order to be in my power to hold space for this program and in that process, so, so much shifted, right? Like the, the program went to a different price point, the words came through differently. So like, that's sort of, that's an example of how she helps us create. And I had to learn how to ride the wave because the problem is nobody teaches us how to do that, right? So I could have, like that shot could have come in and I could have gotten taken down and I could have stopped everything I was doing and been like, I can't do the birthing or the launch anymore. No, I had to learn to like almost eat it for breakfast and just sort of be like, I had to yes it. I had to like find the turn on within it. I mean, I used all the tools of the dark feminine in the process and it upped my game to the next level, right? So to, I don't know if that's helpful, but that's an example of how I see that she's helping, you know, she's coming in to sort of like help clear the debris so that our power can move through us to create. And then I'm sure she helps us with actual creation too, but that's a whole other time. That's a whole other piece of the feminine operating system of like how the feminine and the masculine create come together to create in divine union and consummation and procreation. Like that's a whole other piece of the puzzle that maybe we'll get to later this year. But for now, we're starting with the dark feminine because I think we have to get her on board first. Otherwise we get taken down by like too many things. Okay, any last words? 90 minutes on the dot. All right, I'm impressed by that. So we're gonna finish up. Thank you to everyone who's been here. I'm so grateful for your presence. Thank you for your willingness. Thank you for hearing the call. I'm curious, let's see if anyone feels called to be in the course and the program and go on the journey together because it's gonna be a journey. I think we're all gonna get roto rooted and rearranged, myself included, and uh, I'm up for it. So if anyone else is, let me know if you have any questions and I'm just grateful to your presence here. We will do more classes. I think we'll do on Monday and Wednesday, probably around the same time. So keep your eyes peeled on your inbox and in the Facebook group. And uh, I, want, I want to keep giving you experiences of the dark feminine so that 
number one, because then I can offer these pieces for free since the course is now more of a significant investment. And, and then number two, it gives you an experience to know if you're meant to go deeper. So being seductive in my feminine operating system. All right, let's see. Barbara says, thank you. It had felt like I was sometimes stuck with aligned creation. Your story and explanation is very useful for me. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so I told you about that group of colleagues I was with a while ago. Before I asked them to witness me in my power, they coached me. <laughs> I was like, that's not, I don't need coaching. I don't need coaching because it's been very, I haven't had a coach for a long time because I couldn't find anyone that could meet me in this new way of working and in very dimensional ways. And so I finally just hired a coach who was meeting me in that way. It's, it's, we're just starting, but it's great. But anyway, they were coaching me. And, and one of the things he said to me is like, I, I think you're addicted to alignment. <laughs> I mean, you may not be wrong, but it also just didn't feel like it was on my spot. Like it wasn't the thing. So I hear you. We do have to be careful with that. Um, and, you know, it's all a learning curve. All right. Lots of love to you all. I'm beaming some luscious Hawaiian vibes your way. I'll send some more. We'll do some more on Monday or Tuesday. Stay connected. Like stay connected in the Facebook group. Let me know if like anything unfolds from here. I love, I call it hashtag data from the field. Like I love, it's so, it's such a gift to me when I hear how this work moves out into the world because there's going to be books written about this at some point, you know, I'm, that's all coming, but I need feedback. Like I need to know because um, we're so on skinny branches here. So Feedback is awesome in the Facebook group and I'm sending you all lots of love. Okay, bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you.